Okay, so this video is going to be a part four to a series that you guys seem to be really enjoying, and that is the estrogenics series. Estrogenics, what are they? They are a series and family of chemicals in the world around us that affect our hormones so badly that they change the shape of our family jewels, right? Like our sausage and eggs, if you get my meaning there, right? They can affect our sperm quality so much that we can't even have babies anymore, right? It's really bad. It's really bad. Do I have your attention yet, right? So now that I do, here's a resource I'm going to use to back up the science behind this video. It's a book called Estro Generation. It's by Anthony G.J., PhD, president of the International Medical Research Collaborative. So a real scientist, a real doctor, and he is going to back up the science behind this video today. And this last part is going to be a shorter video, right? Part one, let me give you a summary of what we went through so far. Part one is about the packaging on our food, the plastics around our food, and a lot of more details that you might not think about, such as coffee cups, tin cans, cartons, alternatives that we can use, such as like metal water bottles, like, like this, and other things that we might need to think about that is more detailed than you might think, right? Video number two was about the food itself. There are foods in our environment that cause us to have more estrogen, estrogenated kind of foods and decrease our testosterone health and things like that. A lot of details to talk about there. Video number three was about our testicles and the temperature of our testicles and things that our, our skin and body is exposed to physically, like our phones, phone EMFs, right? You might have had a lot of debate about this, but it is a real thing and that I talked about in video number three. Stuff in the materials that we expose ourselves to as well, our furniture, our tables and chairs, the wall, the ceiling, the, the floor as well, the material on the floor, and our phone cases, things like this, our clothing, synthetic clothing and natural materials, what do we use there? And finally, today in part number four, we're gonna talk about the ingredients in our toiletries. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking about a million miles an hour right now and slow down. Let's have a chat about toiletries. What are toiletries? Toiletries are things that include toothpaste, sunscreen, anything that you might use in the bathroom to kind of like better your skin or like get ready to go outside or like put in your hair or put on your hands or whatever it is right that is the category of toiletries if you didn't know already so there are chemicals put into toiletries that will affect our estrogenic the estrogenic quality of that stuff and it will affect our hormonal health in a very negative way if we start using these chemicals. You probably already are using some of these today, so pay attention to this and you'll be able to purge your life of these horrible chemicals that affect you in this negative way today, right? So let's get started with the list. I've got a list of notes on the screen behind you guys and I'm gonna read off that and tell you what I do in my life and the alternatives that we can go through as well for that kind of thing. So first on my list, Avoid ingredients that include bens or phen in the name. So these are a chemical family, which is bens and phen essentially mean the same thing in, in chemistry. Like I studied chemistry in high school. This chemical family tends to affect our hormones in a very negative way. So avoid these chemicals. If you read the back of anything that you have, so I don't have anything, or maybe this might work. So anything like a, a bottle of water, you can probably read on the back of the ingredients that it has inside it. This is a bottle of water. It's, it's just got the mineral content in there. But on the back of maybe your shampoo bottle, your sunscreen bottle, you can read the chemicals. And if it has bens and phen in it or phen, then it's probably something that you might need to avoid. Right. So have a read of the chemicals and the ingredients list on the products that you use in daily life. Like when you're on the toilet and you pick up something, you, get, you don't have your phone, so you pick up like random things and read the label like for out of boredom. Do that with your shower right now and I guarantee you will find some things that might surprise you, right? Avoid any fragrances in personal care products, right? Things that have, you know, like a, a very overwhelming scent to them, like any, any like fake scent, synthetic scent to have in them, right? Normally these fragrances include things like phthalates and like chemicals that will disrupt our hormonal health right especially in things like what do you call this like uh, fabric freshener whatever it is like the stuff you put in the washing machine to make your clothes smell extra nice that is especially dangerous and especially something that you can really really affect the level of estrogenic chemicals in our life and if you wear any kind of perfume right they this book highly recommends that you shouldn't spray it directly on your skin because your skin 
absorbs that directly and it goes straight into your, your system and that's not good for your body. If you want to wear perfumes, which I no, no longer wear perfumes for this reason, spray it on clothing, right? If you spray it on clothing, it's not contacting your skin and maybe you might lose those kind of like the base notes or whatever that you get from the, the body heat of your skin. But all in all, you smell nice and you avoid these chemicals win-win in that situation yes yeah, so next on the list avoid any fragrances and personal care products or in laundry detergent right so it's better to get the unflavored version or some kind of natural version of your laundry product right so what i do in my life is i go to a shop that is like an eco shop right eco shops do these kind of refill idea right so you go to a shop you bring in like a glass bottle and they fill it in with some kind of eco friendly uh, laundry liquid right and their objective is to make it so that it's friendly for the planet and they that's why they use natural products right so our objective is not quite the same we just want to preserve our own health but natural products help us do that anyway so we can kind of take we can take the hand of the eco-friendly people and the self-improvement people and we can kind of shake hands and say okay we kind of are our, our interests line here so let me let me do business with you and get some products from your shop. For fabric softener, I actually use vinegar. Vinegar, it might sound disgusting to you to use a food in your washing clothes, but this has been used for years and years to soften clothing in, in life, right? The vinegar you should get is white distilled vinegar, right? It's, it's clear. It's not like a, the brown malt vinegar that you might get in like a chip shop or a fish and chip shop, that kind of thing. It's brown. It's not, sorry, it's clear and it could be used to clean a lot of different things, surfaces and like, you know, get rid of lime scale and like clean your kettle out and things like that. Super useful product to get. And I use it myself for fabric softener in my life, right? Especially in areas where the water is hard. So it has a lot of like calcium and like, like uh, mineral deposits in the water. It's good to get rid of that kind of stuff as well. Typically fabric softener usually has a lot of these synthetic chemicals that really, really affect and really ruin our hormonal health if we put it into our clothing, right? Our clothing is something that we wear every day. So it's very important that we take care of this part of the process. So all of these things, shampoo, body wash, soap, can include these chemicals as well. So pay attention to the stuff you buy and have a look if it does have any of these chemicals in there or not, right? Shampoo, I still use a bar of soap that someone got me as a gift a, like a shampoo bar right and this is made out of goat's milk and some other chemicals that are very natural materials right and so those are some examples of natural materials they can find in the world around you that kind of you know are better for you to use rather than a bottle of shampoo that might contain god knows what chemicals in there body wash similar story you can find natural bars of soap or at least minimal bars of soap that don't include any fragrances that don't include anything that is synthetic in there for example i'll show you the one that i use so this is the stuff that I use. It's like 100% premium coconut oil, Castile soap, right? American made, it's, it's on the back it says, free of fragrance, phthalates, sulfates, parabens, EDTA, glutens and colorants, right? So it's a very like, kind of like anti-allergy kind of soap that you can use. And that's the soap that I use instead of body wash to wash my hands or whatever. I don't typically use any kind of shower gel or anything like that. Toothpaste is something else that I don't use as well. What do I use instead? I use baking soda, right? So this bottle like this, it says bicarbonate of soda, it's the same thing. And that's what I use. And that's what people have been using for hundreds of years to brush their teeth. It's a naturally derived material. It's something that doesn't have any negative effects on your teeth or your oral health in general, right? A lot of toothpaste is filled with fluoride and has other chemicals in there that aren't so great for your teeth. So that's what I use. You can get natural toothpaste, like fluoride free toothpaste and things like this. But what I use is baking soda, and so you can do the same if you would like to, or find an alternative if you really don't like the idea of brushing without toothpaste. A lot of deodorants, direct contact with your skin, right? I don't use deodorant, but pay attention to the chemicals in there as well. Sunscreen, right? A lot of sunscreens include things like aluminium, and that is not so good for your skin because it like blocks the pores and it's very bad. It gets into the into our kind of like blood system and it's not good for us in terms of estrogenics entirely, right? So in terms of sunscreen, I don't have to use sunscreen, right? I've been to hot countries that I don't get sunburns, but if you do, I've heard that zinc based sun creams are a lot better than aluminium based ones if you can find them, right? Especially 
sunscreens that are based on tallow, right? Tallow is a very natural ingredient. And so if you can get some like that, I mean, I've even heard of like home remedies of making your own sunscreen out of like tallow and beeswax and like zinc and like three ingredients, you can have sunscreen, right? It's a very like white kind of paste that you, can, you might see like cricketers use this kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I've not really had to deal with that. So I don't have much to tell you in terms of my own story, but that's, that's what it is, right? Toilet seats, right? Toilet seats are made of plastic, right? You might spend like half an hour, maybe an hour on a toilet seat every single day. It's worth changing that to a wooden toilet seat, right? In our houses, it's plastic right now, right? I want to change it to a wooden one. I, I'm doing the research and trying to find what I can do to do that right now. And that's something that I want to get into. A shower poof, right? The shower kind of, I don't know what it's called, like the scrunchy thing that you like normally wash your body with in that you can buy in like Tesco or whatever. It's not good for you, but it's, it's plastic, first of all. And it accumulates like moisture and dirt and bacteria and mold. So it's not a good tool to use to wash your body anyway, right? It just stays in your shower, like wet and moldy. It's not like, even if it wasn't made of plastic, it was not a great thing to use, right? Generally, like I don't use much in terms of like washing my body with. If I did, they do sell these things that are like made out of like a, a long brush of wood and natural like vegetable based fibers in the brush. And you can use that to wash your body as well. Similar things like that you can find in eco shops that I mentioned previously. So they do stuff like refills. They refill you on like rice or vinegar or like washing products or anything like that, right? And they include, you know, natural based kind of things. So like a natural broomstick or a natural dustpan and brush or a natural whatever you want, right? You can typically find it in these eco shops. So type in eco shop or refill shop and you should be able to find one local to you, at least in the UK. I think they're popular in America as well. So have a look at that if you would like to research some more natural materials in the things around you in your life today. Okay, with that being said, that's everything I have to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed that. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you loved it and you would like to see some more videos like this. Thank you for watching. I hope that has helped you genuinely. Knowledge is power and the power is yours. I'll see you tomorrow.